Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today we're talking about emergency electricity, grid down power, off grid power, for those times when the grid fails us. The most common problem we have when implementing some sort of emergency power system is our budgets. We simply can't afford to throw thousands of dollars or euros or whatever currency you're using at an emergency electricity solution to satisfy our needs. Now, just keeping it real, regardless of what we come up with, uh, grid down electricity, emergency power for our grid down communications is never going to be cheap. But we can minimize those costs by removing demand portable aspects of any solution we come up with. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, something cold, and I'll show you what I've come up with. Let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. Now, normally on this channel, when we're talking about emergency power for grid down scenarios, we're talking about power or energy for our radio communications. But uh, this isn't always going to be the case anymore on this channel. We could very well be talking about keeping Granny's CPAP machine up and running. Uh, we could be talking about keeping the lights on or making a cup of coffee with the coffee maker. It's even possible to consider keeping a freezer powered up when the lights go out. Whatever critical equipment we have running in our homes or we need to power out in the field during a grid down or off grid excursion, we should be able to do it using the same emergency power systems we use for our radio communications. Now, before going any further, let's go through the key components making up the kit we'll be discussing today. Now, we're operating with solar power, so naturally the kit is going to have a solar panel. The job of the solar panel is to collect energy from sunlight, then send that energy on to the charge controller. The job of the charge controller is a little abstract. It takes in energy from our solar panels, converting it into something our batteries can use. It also keeps our batteries happy by starting and stopping the charging cycle depending on the state of charge of the battery. Now very often one might believe we can run our equipment directly off of solar panel. For low power devices that may be true, however, most of us want to store the solar energy we collect so that we can use it later. For this we'll need solar storage, a battery. In this context our battery acts sort of like the fuel tank on a vehicle. Energy from our solar panels is stored inside the battery. Now we can use that energy right away, or we can store it for later when the sun is no longer up. Now there's two other components in the system that we may or may not see depending on the configuration of our equipment. The first of these is power distribution. Power distribution takes a single source from our battery in this case, dividing it into multiple outputs. As the name implies, power distribution is the interface between our battery and our equipment, DC equipment. Here we have a few examples like a laptop, our comms gear, a portable refrigerator, an emergency LED lamp, and uh, naturally a DC to AC inverter for powering devices that don't run on DC. The inverter is definitely optional, but a sometimes necessary device. Now, one of the important jobs of power distribution is fusing. The fusing on power distribution protects the devices from wire mishaps or connection mishaps while protecting the battery from the mishaps caused by the devices connected to it. Without reliable connections and fusing between our devices and our solar storage, we risk creating expensive mishaps which could have been solved with a simple 50 cent fuse. In any event, I hope this graphic helps you visualize the system between the battery and the devices connected to it. Let's move on. I have decided to take a tiered approach to my grid down energy preparedness. By tiered approach, I mean we're running primary and secondary energy generation systems at home. Then we have systems that we would put in place if there were no power at home or we were forced 
to leave our homes. With that in mind, the rest of this video focuses on a grid down emergency energy kit. Now to be fair, most people won't start at putting a bunch of solar panels on the roof with uh, huge inverters and uh, massive battery storage. But when we can show something which can be deployed when need be, just after the disaster or when the grid goes down, something which can be used to power critical equipment like our communications gear or Granny's CPAP machine, then we can get more operators on board. What you're looking at now is the Bravo X-Ray Delta 100 watt folding solar panel from Merlin Solar. Now it's definitely not the lightweight amorphous solar panels we normally see on the channel, but the difference is, and I believe its strength, is that it comes in at a much lower price. This 100 watt solar panel will be the core of our kit. A kit we can use at home, out in the field, deployed from a car or RV, or stored in a safe place for a rainy day. The kit includes the Merlin Panther 100 solar panel, the Genesan GV10 charge controller, and all of the necessary cables. Naturally, we'll have to add battery storage to the system. I've added two different batteries, one for home, the other for field work. The primary battery and the one that runs my off-grid ham shack is a Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The smaller battery is the one used if this kit needs to be deployed out in the field. Here you can see all three aspects of the kit combined. There's the battery in a Molly sling bag, the solar panel, and the charge controller. The charge controller and the cabling fit either inside the Merlin solar panel storage pocket or in the Molly sling bag with the battery. Deploying the Merlin solar panel is incredibly simple. There are three sections which unfold and three legs sewn into the fabric which allow you to prop up the solar panel and face it towards the sun. The cable which runs to the charge controller is always connected to the solar panel and stores in a storage pocket on the back of the panel itself. This makes it very unlikely that one can lose that cable since it's permanently attached. When you're finished charging your battery or powering the device that you're powering, you can simply stow that cable away in the storage pocket of the Merlin panel. <laughs> okay, you'll have to give me a second here, guys. Junior has brought his frisbee over and I have to give him a little bit of attention. For those of you who haven't been around the channel a while, you wouldn't know that Junior is actually one of Snapper's puppies. He always likes to help out, does an absolutely fabulous job at training, and he's just a blast to have around. You'll definitely be seeing more of him on the channel. Let's take a moment to talk a bit about the solar panel. It's made in the United States by Merlin Solar. Now I see they have offices here in Europe, but their headquarters is in San Jose, California. I don't think we'll hold that against them though. Now I mentioned earlier in the video, this isn't a man portable panel. So it comes in at 7.7 .7 pounds or 3.5 kilograms. Definitely a car camping, car storage, RV camping type panel. Now like the Merlin solar panel, the Guinness on charge controller is also manufactured in the United States. Now since I've decided to use lithium iron phosphate batteries for this project, I've decided on the Guinness on GV10L version of the charge controller. Now there's a few reasons for using the Guinness on charge controllers. First of all, they're made in the United States like the Merlin solar panel. Now, this isn't the first time you've seen the GV10 on the channel. In fact, it's been around for quite a few years. With that said, the GV10L has been radio silent or near radio silent in most of the configurations I've deployed it in. This is hugely important for communications applications. Finally, depending on where you are in the world, the Genesan GV10 also has a five-year warranty. Since recording all the clips for this video, I've been keeping this kit in the back of my Subaru Outback. The flat briefcase style of the Panther 100 makes it possible to put it under the dog's bed in the back of the car. In addition to the charge controller and all of the cabling, I also keep a small fluke multimeter in the storage compartment of the Panther 100. This makes troubleshooting any cabling issues we might have much easier when we're away from home. 
So I've got my battery in a Molly sling pouch. I've got my Merlin briefcase solar panel. I've got the Guinness on charge controller and all of the cabling required for the kit. Oh yeah, and of course I have that Fluke multimeter. Now before closing down this video, let's go ahead and show you one practical application for this kit. Now many of you already know that I have other hobbies and activities which require compressed air. When the grid is up and electricity is flowing, it's relatively easy to connect that compressor to the grid, refilling those 4500 PSI bottles. Now I'll show you how I power the compressor with the Merlin Panther 100 solar panel, the portable battery that I use for my ham radio ops, and this Vivor 4500 PSI compressor. The very first thing I do is connect the power between the Vivor compressor and the lithium iron phosphate battery pack. The charge controller and solar panel are also wired up together and the charge controller is in parallel with the DC output on the battery. In this scenario, the job of the Merlin solar panel is to recharge the lithium iron phosphate battery. The lithium iron phosphate battery is doing the heavy lifting, providing all the voltage and current to the compressor so that the compressor can fill up that 4500 PSI bottle. As we see in the video, the Merlin Panther 100 solar panel, the lithium iron phosphate battery, and this V-Bore compressor makes short work of refilling this 4500 PSI bottle. We can utilize the capabilities of this kit in the field or in the ham shack. Naturally, it's also easy to conclude if the system is able to power this compressor filling this bottle, we could easily power a contest station for a short amount of time using the same pieces of gear. And when I'm trying to recharge the primary power supply, the Power Queen lithium iron phosphate battery in my ham shack, I often use an additional Guinness on charge controller with a second string. That second string outside is the Panther 100 solar panel. All right, guys, let's go ahead and close down this video. Our communications gear isn't the only thing we need to power in a grid down scenario or disaster. Moreover, not everyone has, you know, a couple of thousand watts of solar panels on the roof and a couple of kilowatts of battery storage in the cabinet. When we're just getting started and we're on a tight budget, we need to think about multi-use systems, systems which can power our communications gear as well as power or recharge other equipment we may use around the house. Quite simply, we really need to start thinking about the bigger picture. And this video was made possible by Guinnesson, Guinnesson in USA and Guinnesson in Europe. Huge thanks to them for making it possible for me to review this kit. I'll leave links to this kit on their websites in the description. I'll also leave a discount code for the Guinnesson website in the description. So please let me know what you think about this kit, guys. The only thing I ask is that you be polite. So if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might find it useful. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.